So you've started your new YouTube channel, what, like a week ago? Maybe a couple weeks ago? Is it months? Is it, is it years? And you're still not seeing any growth from this. Well, hey, congratulations on starting, but it looks like you were running into the very first challenge that pretty much every creator faces, and that is that you're learning the hard way that YouTube is not easy. The good news is though, that you might actually be making a lot of very common mistakes and you would not be the first to make them. So before you go and create any more videos, here's what you need to know. The first mistake people make is having a mentality that YouTube owes you something. And I'm here to tell you that no, YouTube does not owe you anything. There, I said it, I've put that out into the world. Do not fall for the trap that immediate success on YouTube is something that every creator is just inherently entitled to. What's really frustrating about this is you're probably spending the same amount of time that any other creator on YouTube is spending. You're researching your content, you're writing scripts potentially, you're lighting and you're shooting, and you're having to edit all of that together. The problem is though, even though you're doing all of that work, you are not inherently entitled to any level of success on YouTube out of the gate. Before you can take that footage, put it on YouTube, and then expect a bunch of rewards in the form of views and subscribers, you need to first provide value, value to viewers and value to YouTube as a platform. My first 500 videos didn't deserve to get a million views. Like there's a reason they did, they're terrible, you know what I mean? But at the time I thought they did. Yes, it would be great if YouTube provided the same amount of success for every single creator who's putting in the hours to create their content. Yeah, it would be awesome if all we had to do was control the quality of our actual edit and have YouTube provide us the same amount of success that other channels are seeing. The reality is though, it's not like that on YouTube. Note that as a small channel, the YouTube algorithm, AKA people on YouTube, don't really know who you are yet. And you as a creator may still be trying to figure that out for yourself. Similar to how it works on TikTok, YouTube is gonna look at each one of your videos individually to determine who it might be right for. This means that if you don't have any subscribers at all, your video still has people that it could potentially be recommended to. So you need to one, produce valuable content for a specific group of people. Number two is knowing who that specific group of people even is in the first place. These people represent your target audience, not just any audience, a target audience. And so number three, if you make content for those very specific people and it's things they enjoy, you will retain them as viewers and thus get more views and more subscribers and the snowball effect will begin. To make this work, you need to make some content. You need to make some mistakes and you need to make sure that your content gets better and better every single time you go to record a new video. Following those steps will get you recommended to the right audience and thus recommended within the YouTube algorithm. And this brings us to the second big issue that many small channels face. How do you get your target audience to actually click on your content and determine for themselves whether it has value to them or not. Well, you've probably heard us say something like this a thousand times if you're a regular viewer, and we're gonna continue saying it forever and ever, but first impressions matter. Anytime you are about to invest in the SEO on your channel in terms of video tags and description, plow it all into your thumbnails and your titles. I guarantee you will get more views. The thumbnail and the title of your video are critical to viewers giving that video a chance in the first place when it appears on their YouTube home feed or in search. What we're actually talking about here is click-through rate. If your video pops up in front of somebody, how often do people actually click on it? Let's take a look at these two thumbnails, for example. Got them? Now. Out of those two, which one was more appealing to you in that very short time that are on screen? Which one would you have clicked on? Which one could you process and understand faster? Let us know in the comments, but here are just some general rules about thumbnails. Try to keep them from being too complex. Use minimal, clear, readable text. Use bright colors. Foreground should be brighter than background so that everything stands out a lot nicer. And again, keep it simple. It should be easily relatable, not only to the content you made, but to the people who see it. And usually when somebody is attracted to a video's thumbnail, they will automatically scan their eyes down and look at the title. So simply taking the title of your video and repeating it in the thumbnail is a huge waste of time and space. You can use that space for something way more valuable in your thumbnail and let the actual title complement the thumbnail so the two work together. And this is an example of what I mean by that. Both the title and the thumbnail are aligned and right away you know what the video is about. It also raises some curiosity and it may even challenge a belief that you already hold. And if a viewer spends enough time looking at your thumbnail and looking at your title, they're already starting to invest in your video before they even click. And if they do that, the likelihood of them actually watching the video goes up significantly. What helped me personally here was starting to treat the title and the thumbnail as part of the experience of watching the video itself. So whatever time you're currently spending on titles and thumbnails, consider spending double that amount of time the next time you go to make a video. By the way, if you're looking for a little bit of extra help with your titles, we have a tool called the AI Title Generator. You could try it out for free and I will link it down below. I think you'll find it really, really helpful. So let's say you practice and then you nail the next title and thumbnail. What happens? Well. 
Ideally, somebody clicks on your video and attempts to watch it. And even though they do that, nearly every single time you post a video, this is what your retention graph is gonna look like. Yep, a very, very small percentage of people actually make it all the way to the end of a video once they start watching. We know that, YouTube knows that, and we experience it ourselves all the time. That's why the first 30 seconds of your video matter so much. The more your viewers watch, the more likely they are to continue watching. If you can keep people engaged for 30 seconds with a really strong hook and convince them to keep watching, that's going to be a lot of positive signals sent over to YouTube. Good titles, good thumbnails, and good retention slash watch time means your video spreads even farther. So try and get to your point as fast as possible. And please avoid using fancy intro graphics. Wow, that was like 10 seconds long. Here's another mistake that we used to make and even today, channels in our own space are still making. Hello, I'm Rob and welcome to vidIQ, the YouTube tool and channel that educates you on your YouTube journey. If you're building your channel correctly, you will not need to do whatever this is. People should already know why they're watching your video and why they're on your channel in the first place. You've already sold them with a title and a thumbnail, so the value is inherently obvious. So instead of wasting people's time trying to convince them that they click clicked on the right video for them, just focus on the value of your content and jump right into it. Give them a strong hook and then maybe even ask them a question that kind of gets them intrigued and encourages them to engage with you in the comments. Just get them past that first 30 seconds and then continue that momentum. Don't stop and then introduce yourself. Just keep going. Because after they watch the first 30 seconds, you still need them to watch the next 30 seconds. If you start a Patreon or something, save all those shout outs and calls to action till the very end of the video for your most loyal, most hardcore fans. But the longer your average view duration is, the better chance you have of having that video go semi-viral and then grow your entire channel. Because if people watch that entire video, they might be left wanting more. And YouTube with all of your back catalog of videos, we'll have more to show them. These are just some of the common mistakes that we see all the time. And heck, we've even made these ourselves. But at the same time, we didn't wait to start uploading content. We allowed ourselves to make those mistakes and then learn from them after the fact. So don't stop yourself short. Make those mistakes and embrace them. Anyway, we're basically done here. But did you know that there are multiple ways to get seen on YouTube? If that's news to you, you wanna watch this video right here.